turn the tracks off the T34 today, and it's just started to rain. Now we don't actually have the proper equipment for this, so what we're using is 432 track clamps and some bolts through these holes. And we're just gonna squeeze the one we wanna undo, which is that one, just up a bit, and hopefully we can knock the pin out and not get our kit stuck in. Now the only thing that holds T34 and T55 style tracks in is nothing. What happens is, as the track goes round, if we come over here, it's such a crude design, as the tracks go round, there's this, there's this wedge here, and basically the pins, when they pass the wedge, hit that and it knocks them back in. So there's, noth there's nothing holding them from coming out, just pure luck, and obviously moving forward and backwards. Yeah. And that's how they do it, and it seems to be quite reliable. Mm. So we're gonna have a go take them off there. Cool. I reckon, Charlie. I like it. Looking good. You've actually been casting. Is this the final coat? Why? In the yeah. Right, You've just ruined that. How have I ruined it? Because I was doing a nice panoramic shot and you turned and into I, it. I, 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 yeah. We're about to start blasting anyway. Hmm. Get a good before and after. Go round it. Go round it. Look. Show people how it's going. I'm, I'm trying to move. Look. This is the side that people don't see of Joe. Slave driver side. Well, people it's people high. manage people, people management skills, people which he doesn't too have. It's slow and useless. So you have to keep sparing people on. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how cool this comes out. This is really pitted, so I mean, we're not expecting great things from this uh, response, but we'll see. What comes out. He also says, film over here. He also says like a lot of sandblasting. You always have to get all the grease off that you possibly can, but he seems to think it will get a lot of that off. So. I'll be impressed if it does. But they'll be a good I like test. Jack's temporary repair there. Yeah, oh yeah. So also what we found <laughs> while we were getting it, this is like a, a bearing, um, uh, I keep wanting to say shit cover, but that's not the official word, is it? Dust cover. Um, dirt cover. And, and all the bolts have rattled out of it. So uh, we'll need to find some bolts and bolt that back on and clean it. But, not um, just some random hex bolts that you found. No, I think to be honest, we're gonna to have to pull this uh, thing off and make sure it's not done any damage. But, Oh, I'm just spilling. Oh. I'll probably come in and ask you the odd question. But I'll let you spill for a start. Oh God. We can edit bits out, so don't worry. You've, you've put me on the spot now, right? Um, <laughs> it's a good outtake straight away. Yeah, that's um, used. Yeah, but it's, it's difficult when you're not talking to somebody. Right, um, I'll come in, I, I'll I do these standing I'll come in, 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 inside I'll come in of a diesel. Uh, He's getting nervous. Stage fright. No, I do these standing in front of a machine and I just roll it off. Joe, do you not want to stand in front of the just, banner? Just ignore that he's there. Can we put a bag over your head? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else normally does. Oh, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> right. Right. Um, obviously, we've brought our aqua blaster machine. Um, show our, the machine, show the machine. Our, our, our dustless uh, sandblasting machine. So, uh, we're going to run it with uh, the JCB powering our PTO compressor. Show the JCB. Um, compressor. Compressor. That is our... Dustless blaster, that is our, 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 the unimog of the blasting machines. She will do all the bells and whistles. So she'll do dry blasting, she'll do wet blasting, and then obviously you can do the 
the blow down and wash down as well. So if you if you dry blasting, which is like standard blasting, yes. do you have to change the head? Nope, you run you run it on the same head. Use the same head. Oh, you do, right? So that would be water on. Yeah. You turn the water on. There's no electrics in there. No, it's just it's a pneumatic switch. They look like an electric kill switch. Don't e they? Exactly, right? But no, there's just two air lines, and that's that's just a valve on the back. Yeah. So we can turn the the abrasive off as well. So then you have just the water, ju just, just water and air, or just air by itself as well. <laughs> Um, that's the 100 meter, so we have five bags inside in her, and you're kind of talking uh, about half an hour. How, how heavy is one bag then? Like 25 kilos. 25 kilos. Yeah. <laughs> and you got kind of half an hour out of it before she will run out of um, abrasive. But that's with a very, very large compressor. Yeah. Obviously, if you were running it with a, a standard four cylinder, it would be 175. Yeah. You, you'd get 45 minutes to an hour out of that five bags. It's a crazy amount of time because you can do a lot of area. In that. Yeah, I know. And I, I know I said kind of two hours. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. time it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It, look, it'll be interesting to see how, how much how long pressure it will you set it on for knocking this off? Obviously, it's quite hard. Kind of a, around the eight or nine bar mark. So 125 that can PSI. Do ten, that can do that 10. Can do 10. Bar, so it'll easy do. Easy, easy. Yeah. The thing is, is the cast. Yeah. It's a little bit more dense than mild steel or anything like that. So it's a little bit harder to put up. So mild steel, you do around 6, 7. So we we'll just push it up a little bit and see how the cast reacts to it. Then. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're going to use fine crushed glass. So yeah. it's bottle bank recycled glass. Is that the best we could use on this or would there be a better material? Because you're wet blasting. Yeah. You want it cheap and cheerful. Okay. Right, the bags work out at kind of three pounds fifty a bag. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, you, if you're using a ton on something like this, it's not you know 130, 140 pounds. It's, it's not breaking the bank. No, no, not at all. Yeah, there's plenty of other abrasives, better abrasives, stronger that give you a better edge. But you're talking five, six hundred pounds a, a Quite ton. A big then. Difference. Exactly. Yeah. Because we're wet blasting, we're not reusing it. Yeah. We're doing it outside. It's not like we're scraping it all up and reusing it again. I've never thought that's a good thing to reuse anyway. No, we do have a sieve, right? Yeah. So we have a sieve and it's got little holes in here. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. even if you've got stones going back in, if it fits through these holes, it'll go through the nozzle. And oh, it won't really? Block the they're, machine. Quite, they're quite big holes to be fair, yeah, aren't they? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it means it will go through the machine. Uh, so, so it must be dry. It must be dry. Yeah. It has to be dry. Because. This is all dry in this machine. The only water is literally at the tip. So water comes from the IBC, goes straight in. There's a, a double diaphragm water pump sitting here. The water comes into the pump and it's two diaphragms. So it goes out and pushes it all the way to the nozzle. And it literally- So is that, is that the water there? That's your water line, right? So it's literally at the end? Yeah. So you have your water line coming in and then you have an eight mil kind of flexible so you can move the, the nozzle around. So what happens here is there's a little channel in here as the abrasive and the, the water come out. So is that like a venturi or whatever? Exactly, siphon. It, it sucks up a little bit of atmospheric air yeah, yeah. and then just water pulls mixes it, in and vaporizes it. It's simple. That, that, well, yes. No electronics. Exactly, exactly. Nothing to go wrong. Well, that's the thing with the compressor. We're showing the compressor. Yeah. Also, the compressor doubles up as a, as a dining room table. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So this is our Dairy Mount 350, right? Uh, she's 350, 350 CFM. CFM. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's a 10 bar machine, right? So Power. 1000 PTO, yeah. two to one ratio gearbox. And there is lovely double duplex chain running it. Um, so that high. <laughs> I mean like- That's the best thing about it. You see that, you know what I mean? It's business. a manly machine. Yeah. Yeah. What um, size is it? It's a, it's a twin screw. So normally you'd have one screw, but this is a, it's a twin screw. That's a, an Italian um, air ring. It is built. Oh, it is. Um, Look nice. at the size of the, the thickness of the wall of the machine. It's nearly armoured. It's nearly like the tanks. <laughs> built like the tanks. And all hand welded in Ireland. Really? Yeah, everything. No robots, no nothing. We, it, like, 
James does absolutely everything on the very ones. Every, everything's all welded by one welder. James isn't the boss. No, he's not. No, 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 no. no. He's our, he's our very mount welder. But the boss of the firm did start by literally building the machines himself. Exactly. He was welding. He didn't get someone else in. Oh, I recently, like two or three weeks ago, I saw a pot that came back and it was 11 or 12 years old. And the boss originally did it in his <laughs> wells, and and we were we were picking stuff out in it. No, it all. You know, it's a good firm when the boss is actually starts at the bottom, doing all the all the way to the top. Oh, it was it was one man starting, and then yeah. just slowly. And now we're kind of 22, 23 staff. Where the hell? Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, you you have a shaft. You have an inner shaft on this inside, so you can yeah, put so it. So you can the have front. it either front or back, because obviously it reverses. And I mean, it's always rotating in the same direction. Because I had a Unimog, and the front shaft ran the wrong way. Oh, so you could put rear. Wow, that's confusing then. Yeah. Because it had a, um, I forget the name of it. it. Had a reverse gearbox put on the front. PTO, so you could put a front mounted, a rear mounted thing on the front. Oh, for like road sweepers or okay, yeah, yeah. You know what Unimogs are like? Yeah, they're full exactly. of everything, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. It, I mean, it was no use. You put something on the front of a Unimog and it's like nine miles long when you're trying to pull out of it at junction. <laughs> and you can't do more than it's trying to do a wheelie because there's no weight on the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we put overrun shafts on all the PTOs so that people can't turn them the wrong way. Yeah. So we've got a rear shaft in it and a front shaft. And, we stick at that. Um, so minimal horsepower to run this. Ideally, you want more than 120. Will it make it black smoke? No. If it's low, if it's if it'll just conk the tractor. But it'll kill it. It'll kill it. If you both these balls out closed and you put a hundred horsepower John Deere on there, it'll just conk it straight away. <laughs> you can rev it up and dump the PTO. No, it'll just conk it straight away. It's, so is there a uh, so if they are if they are closed, is there like a, re a relief valve? Because you have. You have this is is literally a big um, uh, gate valve. Yeah. So when there's no air requirement, yeah. there's little lines going back to the top of the expansion tank. That. So it, it says low pressure. I'm not going to make air. It dissipates about 150 cfm underneath the machine. Huh. There's a little Bow valve absolutely. down in here, yeah. and it just dissipates it. And then when you open the ball valve and it senses that it's under pressure, under workload, yeah. it, it'll create more than that. So it's variable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Obviously you can have it on tick over, on idle, yep. and it'll only make about 200 CFM. Yeah. And then as you rev it up, you'll make more and more, more and more. more. But it's go. 10 bar all the way through. Cool. So the pressure's there no matter what. Exactly, hmm. exactly, yeah. Um, we have some small horsepower tractors, and you could open both wall valves, start the tractor and rev it up, and you can slowly close them. You, it might work for you, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's awkward. Awkward. Yeah. Well, that's quite cool. Well, we better make a start, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Let's let's crack it So we're about to start. Yeah. But I noticed you're not in a massive mask of a massive helmet. No, the, the traditional sandblaster would have a big helmet and a that cape. Weighs and a ton. Exactly. Right. Number one, the crushed glass. There's no silica in it. Yeah. So even if we were dry blasting it, the dust is not hazardous to us. Okay. Um, number two, you then still want an FED mask. If, if, if you were dry blasting, dry blasting it, yes, because yeah. of what's coming off the contaminants and yeah, everything. The paint. You, you don't know what what that is. Um, so because we're wet blasting, we're soaking any dust that might well, be coming off it. It's not going to be in the air. It's just running down. So you see this mist coming off it. Yep. That is water vapor. Yeah. Because you have hot air touching steel and it's blowing on it and, and the water mist coming out is really really fine. So it, it'll just there'll be a water mist coming, but all the dust will be on the ground. And there's not much blowing back in your face then? No, oh, of course if you perpendicular you blast like that you're gonna get it back in the face. Yeah. You will. Um the thing is let's say when I go in here and the little crevasse is down, I wanna be away from it a little bit. Yeah. But I've got enough of a hose in front of me that it's a good distance, distance away from away, me, yeah. right? So all you're going to use is basically a grinding mask. This is a grinding shield. It's an IP rated thing so that if you did have abrasive hit it directly, it's not going to shatter or anything yeah. like that. It'll it'll bend that way. And of, of course, ear plugs. So you've got a lot more free movement. Yeah, and you don't have to spend a, a thousand pounds on your... Boiling hot, can't see what you're doing, looking exactly. like you're about to go to the bottom now, of the Atlantic. I might get a little bit wet. Yeah. On the outside of this, it should be fine. I can aim most of the water away from myself. I have got waterproofs for the inside so you keep the, the, the bottom half uh, dry. But if you're if you're getting wet on the chest, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> Watch his chest then. Yeah. yeah, we'll People see. People will be dying to see Yes, ah, wrong. sure, look. But we do everything wrong around here, so don't worry about it. Yes, yes. It's about learning. But we'll see how it goes. We'll yeah. see, we'll see. Perfect. Let's start it up. Uh,
wearing is cold rolled. Like this is the, the black stuff here. That that's whatever carbon or, or treatment was in the steel when they welded it all together. So you, you can see the black. Whatever it is that sheets were joined or whatever way it was done. So I, I can this is probably two mil thick or three mil thick, but that's steel as well. So I can go through it. It's a little bit hard to go through it. It just takes a bit more time. But this is not, that's steel. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. just whatever contaminant is on it. Well, now the Russians, I mean, all the contaminants. Exactly, exactly. You see, it, it's strange to even see the colors difference in the steel. Right? This is probably like, what, three minutes of plastic? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Come on again, the pub where I was born He played it from the night time to the pace of early morn He served the souls of psychos and the men who had the horn And they all looked very happy in the morning But Jimmy didn't like his place in this world of ours Where the other man brought storm and next to me had too many pairs So I sat to see the grieving of the people that I'm leaving And he took the road for God knows in the morning We walked into the station in the rain we kissed him as we put him on the train And we sang him a song A time's long gone Though we knew that we'd be seeing him again But I sad to say I must be on my way So buy me beer and whiskey Cause I'm going far away I'd like to think I'll be returning when I can To the greatest little boozer And to Sally McLennan The years went by The times were changed I grew to be a man I learned to love the virtues of Sid Sally McDonald. I took the chairs and drank the beers and crawled back home and done. I ended up a barman in the morning. I played the pump and took the hump and wore the whiskey down. I took the hoes and horses to the men and drank the brown. I heard the sight of Jimmy's making money far away. And some people left for heaven without warning. We walked into the station in the rain. We kissed him as we put him on the train. Well, that's because that ain't been turned. Just turned that. But it has actually knocked that grease and shit off, which I didn't think it'd do. I'm impressed with that. I'm going to try and get that transfer. Yeah, so you can get that on the floor. So when you start, I, I turned up the water pressure yeah. when we were washing it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I turned the, wa the water back, back down again. Where it was. Yeah, yeah. It was around the two bar marks. Yeah. Oh, it's time for me to have a little go. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll fill her up. Yeah. And then I'll start it off. I'm going far away I'd like to think I'll be returning when I can To the greatest little boozer and to 
szalimatlanál. Three quarters of a ton with a brush. Yeah, <laughs> you ready? Right. Well, we're about, we're pretty much done, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Throwing it Ted. Poor dog did nothing wrong. We are. We are. Yeah. Um, oh, it was. It was scary, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It did. We what? We started at twelve o'clock, one o'clock. Yeah, um, we, didn't, we didn't stop particularly early. No. Um, but, I mean, How long do you reckon we've had any blasting? Actual blast. Five, six hours? Do you reckon as much as that? I'd say so. Yeah. Um, there was an awful lot of like little detaily things that took so much time. Yeah. Like constant stopping and starting. And look, it's not perfect. And yeah, but it's almost there. To go to what we want to do now, really, we want to pull, pull it forward or pull it back and just do the. It's very hard to do wheels yeah. in one position. So we'll probably pull it forward and, and, and do the bits we've missed. But generally, we haven't missed that much. But you can see the quality of steel, how the black. That isn't because we've missed it. That's just because it's cast badly. So well, when a blacksmith's, um, you know, hammering metal and they turn it over when it's red hot and the slag all falls off, that's that's what's coming off, basically. Yeah, yeah, all the impurities, and obviously they, they haven't made a good job of that. Whereas look at the barrel, where they've cared about the barrel. So the barrel's been made out of much better metal. And you can see there's hardly any blacking on that at all. But look at the turret. The turret's pretty much all black. That's a terrible cast. I, obviously, loads of stuff mixed loads in when they cast Loads of impurities. Yeah, yeah. Loads and loads of impurities. So the holes are a fair lot better than the turret. The turret's even, even the wells are very, yeah. very nice. But like, we've found all sorts of cracks, so, which no shock on the turret. So look at that massive crack there. There's another massive crack here, which is quite common for T34s. But when you can actually see why it's because the car the, the the grade of the metal that is, is full of impurities so no wonder it cracks yeah there's even a massive crack on the front of the glasses plate well it's not massive but you'd never see that with needle gunning i wouldn't have said but that showed that up but when you think how thick this front bit of front bit of armor is because it focused there do you think how thick the front bit of armor is for it to crack what is that probably it's a fair thickness, isn't yeah. it? It's a fair thickness. Inch and a half, or yeah. Yeah, but no, the, the paint's gonna go on to that really good. Oh yeah, no, perfect. It'll adhere to that. There's a lovely finish for it. So we, we just power washed it off with the machine afterwards, just to get most of the top of the sand off. Did use the rust inhibitor yeah, in so the water with the, uh, with the power washer as well. So basically with that rust inhibitor, we go about two days, three days before yeah. it would start flash rusting, where it just starts to go orange really quickly. So uh, there's not a thing overly wrong about that tiny bit of surface rust. No, uh, that, people freak of, out about it. Don't yeah, they? they do. They do. A lot of the the oxidizing primers, they they grab they'll, that. They'll they actually like, like a little bit. Yeah, something um, to adhere to. Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah. No, it's come up really good. Right? I mean, wet blasting versus dry blasting. Yes, you got a mess. But you have a mess either way. Exactly. But if the mess is there. It's not everywhere exactly that, we could walk over there where my sister's hut is there's there's no you know we're not exactly that far away we're another bit left the park and there are no steps sweat a little bit but basically where he, like, you know. where he hasn't sweat there's only very tiny yeah. half doors of sand but, uh, you know, i have moved the tank i want to get it um coming but uh, he will we'll show you Normally when you dry bath and, and your compressor's close by, obviously the, the cloud of dust and everything gets completely eaten up by the compressor. And the only muck on here is where we've literally just put our PPE down. Yeah. But we've not got hardly any dust at all on the machine, on the tractor, and it's only literally feet away from, uh, from where we were. So the engine on the tractor isn't sucking in loads of sand and, and grit. And no other is the compressor. So we even use it as a lunch table. Yeah, and a, yeah, perfect lunch table. You can put your put your pack up in there. 
I think you say a lot of kids uh, in Ireland put light bars and stuff on the front of it because exactly. they have them on the front of a tractor, as you see. Put a nice 50 inch all the way down the bottom, <laughs> exactly. Or, or because she sticks out a little bit, you can put a nice corner flag or yeah, yeah, that's a hell of a bit of kit. All day, it's not, it's not, it's not heavy, no, to move it around. It's still a bag or two in the in yeah. that as well, and, yeah. and you can still maneuver it. We usually are as heavy as sin, you can't do anything with them, yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, so basically, I think if we were needle gunning this tank, it would have probably took us at least three weeks to needle gun on what we've done in probably less than six hours, really. Yeah. And the quality we'd have got with the needle gun would have been no way near as good as this. We'd have had to have passed over it with a wire wheel and spent hours and hours. And wire wheeling's dangerous, needle gunning doesn't do you any good at all. No, it doesn't. Not when no. you're doing it for hours on end, let alone three weeks. So oh, yeah, um, Your hands go to bed shaking at night. It's like. literally a lot safer. And like even, I thought, you know, not, not having gloves on, it's going to be really, really hard. It's, it's literally not. You don't feel it, do you? No, no. It's, the water kills the that momentum. The suppression from the water, yeah. it, you know, obviously um, it, if you were to difference. If you were to dry blast that, you'd need a, a tough oh, uh, overall full, full, full leather gloves, everything. And you wouldn't be able to say, I think you'd be boiling hot. Yes, especially Whereas, in the lovely day we had. No, you'd be. Oh, don't you. get me wrong, though, every she like when you're doing wheels and it flashes back and, and you and There's you downsides your mask to it too, absolutely. But if you have a couple of masks, you just swap them out, it's, it's quite nice to have a break. You can see where you, you, you need to go, so it takes two seconds to swap the mask, doesn't e it? Exactly. Whereas getting out your suit and messing around, it's a... Changing the visor and yeah, it's like a, If you were dry blasting those wheels, it would do exactly the same thing. Yeah. The visor would, uh, would... It would be all scratched up, you'll exactly. not see anything. <laughs> exactly. But uh, no, thank you very much for coming. No, pleasure, absolute pleasure. No, I've re really enjoyed that and it's, uh, it's put us ahead by a lot, <laughs> a lot of weeks. <laughs> Absolutely, our, our pleasure. No, no, our pleasure. So we've obviously got other little bits to do like there's fuel tanks and stuff but you know there's no point showing you every tiny little detail of the blasting but but it's definitely sped the whole job up massively so we've just got a bit of clearing up obviously this will pretty much dry out tomorrow we'll sweep most of the glass away bag it up and uh, we obviously won't reuse it but um we'll just chuck it on the hardcore eat bit of extra hardcore exactly 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 but it's not it's not hazardous no it's so not that's the not. thing it's just sand it's before anyone whinges that we're destroying the environment no it's recycled it is, already it is the environment yeah. so it's okay but, greta uh, beware yeah greta, be, <laughs> greta, greta friendly <laughs> no well uh, i think that's pretty much it for this episode the next episode hopefully we'll be uh, putting some primer on it and uh, yeah getting some paint on it so stay tuned thank you all for watching